Bites Time, the retro version. Glad you could be with us today. To start, let's turn the rink clock back almost 20 years to 1980. Lake Placid Olympics had been completed for several weeks, and unlike this last Olympics when most gold medalists bowed out of the following World Championships, in 1983 of the four Olympic champions were in Dortmund, West Germany, for the event. Of course, all the media's eyes were on the favorites, but something else was brewing about Worlds that year, something that Globe and Mail writer Nora McCabe called the week of the child. Dortmund Worlds was the international launching pad for names like 14-year-old Katarina Witt of East Germany, 12-year-old Tracy Weinman from Toronto, and Poland's spectacular 13-year-old Gregor Filipowski. Another inspired young athlete from Canada starred in our news headlines from 1980. Terry Fox begins his marathon of hope with a dip on the East Coast. Mount St. Helens erupts covering hundreds of miles with soot and changing weather patterns for years to come. Newfoundland's fishing industry is shut down by strikes, lockouts and layoffs. 35,000 are without work. Beatle legend John Lennon is gunned down outside his New York City apartment by Mark Chapman. I don't know where the tradition came from, but as long as I can remember, the Paris competition is the first event at both Nationals and Worlds. That year in Dortmund, three-time Olympic champion and ten-time world pair champ Irina Rodnina and her husband and partner Alexander Zaitsev were out with injury, as were the defending world pair champions from the U.S., Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner. That left the title wide open for the Olympic silver medalists Marina Sharkasova and Sergei Shakrai, one of the cookie-cutter pair teams from the Soviet Union. The team was physically well-matched, both tall and long on the ice, and they skated very close together, but the personality and performance was flat. 80 was their last kick at the camp from Dortmund. back to Retro Ice, time for a jump back in time to the 1980 World Championships. In the singles events, it was called the Week of the Child, and no child was a greater focus than 12-year-old Tracy Wayman from Toronto. Maybe you remember the story. Tracy had been novice champ in Canada in 79 and boldly moved right up to senior in 80 due to her heavy adult technical artillery on the ice rink. When the ISU voted on setting a minimum age for newcomers to the World Championships, the CFSA made a hugely controversial decision to send Tracy to Worlds over Canadian champion Heather Kim Karen, who, incidentally, was Tracy's training mate at Toronto Skating Club. Although Tracy's 80 Worlds performance was lost to the tape goblins, let's go back to 80 Canadians to the short program and the moment when the country first recognized Tracy's talent. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, all across Canada, hold on, because here is 12-year-old, 4'7", grade 8 student, Tracy Weeman from Bayview Avenue in Willowdale in Toronto at the Toronto Cricket Club. She is third after the compulsory figures. <laughs> the double flip jump is also one of the required jumps, one of the three. Here comes the combination, double axle, double loop. Huh. That's going to be dicey. Now the question is whether that was the combination or whether it was the required double axle. It didn't look like a mistake. With only a single axle, however. Take a look at her face. She's smiling all the time. She's got to do those tricks, though.
double axle, but I guess the element which was missed was the combination, probably the most important of all seven. It's hard to believe because it didn't look as though she had there was any motion before or after it that made it look like a miss. I just can't understand that. One year later, Tracy would become champion of Canada and move up into the world top ten. The vehicle was this program from 81 Canadians in Halifax. Well, here's our leader. She wants to become our champion. 13 years of age. Bright, beautiful, sparkling, exciting, athletic. And even at her age, uh, John, artistic as well. Should win for this mile. Now look at the speed, the way she covers the size. It really literally takes her three strokes to go from end to end. As she now builds up for her first triple jump, she has here planned a triple Saukau jump. It's an edge jump from a back edge with three revolutions. There it is, and perfectly executed. This child scares the daylights out of me when we watch her in warm-up. She must have tried that triple south house six times, didn't land one of them. Debbie, look at these two double axles she has planned here, and look at the height she gets from nowhere. There's the first one, second one, and she's only skated one minute of her performance and already had so many moves and jumps in it. Incredible when you think that she, at 12 years of age, was the 10th best free skater in the world last year. Watch again. Another triple Saukau, and those are edge jumps. I want to explain they're much more difficult than the triple toe loops that we see others do. Right out of Disney. She was very worried during practice earlier this week because one of the hooks off of her boot had fallen off and it didn't make a hole in the leather. She couldn't get her lace through, so they had to use an ice pick. I don't think there's a father in the rink here tonight that wouldn't want to take her home and say, you're mine. to her coach, Ellen Burka, but also to some of the coaches that she has had in the past, those that made the wonderful technique and gave her the fantastic basics. Wally Disselmeyer, Judy Williams. Great talent. You know, it's fantastic at her age that she's able to have a program that's so well choreographed and well, so well interpreted as far as the music is concerned. Oh. I don't know what happened there. Thirteen-year-old Tracy Raymond. 
In Dortmund back in 1980, Annette Putsch repeated her win from Lake Placid with West Germany's Dagmar Lurz in second and Olympic silver medalist Linda Fratiani from the U.S. third. Katerina Witt was 10th, Elaine Zayak was 11th, and Tracy Wayman, 10th in the free, finished 14th overall. The CFSA's decision was the right thing for women skating in Canada, but was it the right thing for Tracy Wayman? Let's ask her after this short break. It was one of the juiciest stories in skating in the early 80s with all the stuff movies are made from. A child prodigy, tiny, talented, effervescent, bright and tough, and capable, it seemed, of just about everything. At 12 years of age, the world was anything but scary. Now, nearly 20 years later, the Tracy Wayman story is still recognized as a remarkable accomplishment. Tracy, do you know you're still a star? <laughs> There's that well, smile we all came to know, too. I don't know about that. But. Well, thank you for being with us today. Let's talk about 1980. What do you remember about it? What is sort of the blazing uh, single thing that comes to mind when you think about it? I remember um, it was tremendously exciting. Um, it's, uh, I, I didn't expect to go to Worlds that year. And uh, so everything was quite overwhelming. I was just excited to be everywhere. And I remember media around me, surrounding me wherever I went. They had a practice rink and they had a competition rink. And I could not walk from one rink to the other without absolutely being swarmed by media. Well, and you were only 12 years old. Mm -hmm. did, did this not frighten you in some way? At that time, no. I found it all very exciting. Um, I was excited to perform in front of anyone, uh, in front of everyone. I, um, I had a lot of fun doing it. I, I didn't feel the pressure at that time. Were you aware of the tremendous controversy there was over the decision? Like, I mean, how, how was your relationship with Heather Kim Karen over that? You must have felt some kind of tension. Well, I skated at the same ice rink, and um, we also were coached by the same coach. And um, I think that the media surrounding the whole incident built it up as this major, major feud between Heather and I. And um, I just recently saw Heather, and we talked about it. And Heather and I always remained friends, and she never um, blamed me or held me responsible for the decision. And um, so I think that was a lot of build up. Heather and I always got along, and um, she understood that, you know, I was 12 years old, that this decision was made for me. And um, I was given the chance to go to World, and um, I wasn't going to turn it down. Of course not. Of course not. It was a thrilling opportunity. I had said in the show that it was a great decision for Canadian women skating, but I question what kind of a decision it was for you as a person. Uh, I get asked that a lot, um, and I've had many years um, to think about it. And um, as I said, when I was 12, I, I didn't feel the pressure at that time. Uh, later years, um, when I faulted a little bit, I began to realize that I was almost human and that I, I did make mistakes and that it could happen. And the reaction when it did happen um, was almost so devastating to me. I felt that I had let everybody down and I lost grip in why I skated in the first place and the tremendous love I had for it, the tremendous love I had for performing, and I lost that for um, quite a few years. Well, it was. You were Canadian champion in 81 and then lost it the next year, and it was five years later yeah. before you were Canadian yeah. champion again in 86. Was mm -hmm. that kind of like a, the shedding of all the bad stuff at that moment when you became champion again? I think it was self-discovery about um, what I really loved about skating. And um, there was a, a point of time that I, I almost feared letting people down and lost grip about what was important to me. And I was, I was more scared to, to let somebody else around me, the media, down and disappoint them that I forgot about myself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it took some soul searching and I think that I'm, I'm a much stronger person going through that. So I, I cannot say that um, it was uh, not the right decision for me or if it, if it 
hurt me um, in my life because I think that I've gained so much out of that. Whereas maybe if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't have had to look inside and find the deep love for skating that today I still have and will the rest of my life. It's interesting because it's probably uh, of, of absolutely negative value to ponder about what would have happened had you not gone to Worlds in 1980. Mm -hmm. I know you're still very involved in skating. You're coaching in the Toronto area now. Now, how's that as a whole new experience? Do um, you like it? I do. I do. I was in the show for um, a number of years, and I decided that um, I was I was ready to settle down. I, I didn't want to travel anymore. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to try coaching. And it was a very new experience for me. Let me ask you two things. Mm -hmm. Would you do it again? given the same choices at the same time in your life? Yes, most definitely, most definitely. You also have a seven-year-old son mm -hmm. named Blade. Is he a skater? He Will does he skate. become a skater? That's, that's up to him. You know, um, I think it's great that he's learning how to skate, and if he loves it, then I will encourage it. Uh, if he's, I also have him in other things, and um, so if he wants to do something else, then I say, you know what, Blade, you know, it's whatever, whatever his interests are. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Your story has really been uh, a, a shining spot in Canadian skating history, and it's been wonderful to talk to you about it these many years later. Thanks it's very been much. It's great to be here. Tracy Wayman, one of the biggest skating names in the 80s and one of the biggest sports stories. Here are some more to remember. Retro will be right back.